What's going on everybody? My name is Jarrett. Today we're going to do a tow hook install on this 2015 plus Ford Mustang. Let's get into it. All right guys, first step on this installation process is get a small flat tip screwdriver. And what you want to do is you want to remove all of these inserts on the cowl. So we want to get this whole cowl off. The easiest way to do this is take the blade of the screwdriver, stick it under that top part, give it a little twist. And what you want to do is you want to pull it out and you want to do that process on all of these inserts all along the top of the cowl. All right, once you have all the cowl fasteners removed, you can move this part off. Next step is you want to remove all of the bolts holding the bumper on. You're going to need a five and a half millimeter socket and an eight millimeter socket. The five and a halfs you need on the outer side and these inner ones are all eight millimeters. Basic ratchet socket, remove them and we'll start that process now. All right, so after you got those front uh, fasteners removed from the top of the bumper, you want to remove your front wheels. Okay, there's a lot of torque on those. All right, guys, wheels are off. Next step is remove the plastic clips on the inside of the fender liner. Best tool to use for this is your traditional interior pry tool. So we're going to remove these and show you how it's done. All right, after those clips are removed, this is a little bit of a tricky part, but what you want to do is you want to pull this interior fender liner back away and you want to use this specific stack up. So we have a 3 8 inch drive small extension to a swivel to a 10 millimeter socket. You want to use this so that you can get this on a nut that's up under this fender liner here. It's a little tricky, but this is how we're going to do it. All right, guys, this is a really important step. You've got to really make sure that you peel this inner fender liner back far enough so you can access this. This part is tucked up under this side of the bumper. You got to remove two nuts. And then one really important thing you got to remember is there's actually a plastic fastener that's up in there too. Use a pry tool from underneath here and pry that thing down. This will drop out. And now at this point, you can see that this side of the bumper is loose. You have to repeat this step on the other side of the car. All right, guys, in this step, we want to actually remove the air dam from the front bumper, as well as from where it's mounted to the chassis under here to do this. There's a variety of screws that you have to remove. All of them are, can be taken off with a seven millimeter socket. You also have two chassis mount plastic clips that are here and here. So you have chassis mounts here and here. And on the underside, you have a variety of uh, seven millimeter hex head screws here that wrap all the way around. There's also two other plastic fasteners you have to remove and they're on your inside fender liner. So you have to remove these two guys as well. We're gonna do that work now and show you the next step. All right, guys, once you have all those fasteners removed, remember you got a bunch along the front. You also have your ones at your fender liner access points and the chassis, remove all those, the air dam literally just slips out. Next step is really important. You guys got to make sure you disconnect your turn signal connectors. So you have to reach up into the car and disconnect them from the turn signals. And next step is removing the front bumper. All right, we got to remove the front bumper. I suggest you guys do two things. Get a buddy like Jar YD over here to help you out. It really takes two people to get the bumper off. The other thing is put a blanket down where you're gonna set the bumper. That way it's on a safe surface. This stuff's painted, you don't wanna mess it up. So what you wanna do is you actually wanna angle the bottom of the bumper out first and then lift off. The lift off, you have to clear these little posts that are hanging on the front bumper. So we're gonna do that now and watch along. Out, up, set it on. All right, next thing we wanna do is remove this active aero system. You're going to need an eight millimeter socket. There's two eight millimeter bolts here. There's also two more down here that you need to remove. While you're down here, you need to remove the ambient air temperature system or this little controller switch. Easiest way to do that is actually just pull this out of the chassis and set that aside. There's also two plastic clips you have to remove. One here and one here. Easiest way to do them is with a pry tool. Once you have the hardware removed from the front of the air vent system, we have to do some work on the back side before you can remove this from the front bumper of the car. All right, so you need to remove this wiring harness clip, which is attached to the back side of the air vent system here. You also need to remove two bolts with a five and a half millimeter socket. There's one bolt here and one bolt here. That'll drop this arm down. Once that arm drops down, we can slide the air vent system off the front of the bumper. All right, guys, this is the back side of the air vent system. We wanna show you one other thing that you need to do. Once you get these two bolts removed, this actually slides out of the way. Once you get that out of the way, 
there is a final connector that you need to, to detach from the air vent system. Here's the connector, and it's actually attached right down here on the bottom of the air vent system. You need to get this arm out of the way in order to detach that connector. All right, with the air vent system off, now you have access to your crash beam. So in order to get the TOEIC system mounted, you need a half inch socket. A little extension is a help too. And you need to remove these two bolts right here that attach this side of the beam to the actual chassis there. And the two bolts are right here. So we're gonna go ahead now and get those removed. All right, once your crash beam bolts are removed, you need to get a 7 16 inch drill bit in order to drill out the riv nuts that are on the back side of this bumper beam. The reason you need to do this is because we're using an M10 bolt to attach through the bumper beam with a nut and a bolt. So you need to drill through this riv nut in order for this bolt to pass through the bumper beam. Right here are the riv nuts that you need to drill through on the back side of the bumper beam. You guys have made it through the hard part of this install process. Now we get to the fun stuff about actually installing your Racing product. So included with your tug tow hook system, you have your bumper mount or your tug shaft mount. You have your tug shaft, your tow hook ring. You also have two flanged head fasteners, washers and bolts, as well as your shaft nut. We're gonna show you guys how to install this on the car now. All right, so to install the mount on the backside of the bumper beam, first thing you wanna do is you wanna move your wiring harness out of the way. Small flathead screwdriver, tuck it in right here. That slides out. Take your harness, just kind of push it back out of the way. It really helps to do this install. The easiest way to get this on is to actually put your bolts in first. So grab your bolts, pass them through the holes. All right, bolts are through the holes. Now with your mount, these pockets here go to the front of the car. So this pocket to the front, so what you want to do is you want to use these two fingers to push in the bolts take them out, go up behind the beam, and slide it over the bolts. All right, with the mount in place, now grab your washer and your nut, run them onto the bolts. And now to actually finally tighten your mount, you need a 17 millimeter wrench, along with a 15 millimeter socket. A little extension helps to pass through the bumper beam. You wanna tighten up the hardware really well. Let's try it out. Once your shaft mount's on, you wanna put your harness back in place. Slide that back in. Attach that connector. You also wanna take your ambient air sensor right down here and put it back in through these two holes. Now, mind you, there's two different size holes, so you have to make sure you orient this thing properly in there. It goes like that. All right, guys, mount is on. Now we need to take care of your air vent system. So if you notice, our tow hook mount actually comes below the crash beam, which is where your bottom air vent system go, goes. You can't put this back on. So what we suggest for you guys to do is, is to mark the bottom edge right here with a piece of orange tape and cut along that tape line. And then that drops this lower part of the air vent system off. And then you can reinstall this upper section back onto the car. We're gonna do that now. All right, so to do this line, obviously we're at Ray Sang shop. We have access to a vertical bandsaw. If you don't have a vertical bandsaw, honestly, the best next thing to use is a Dremel, but use a reinforced metal cutting wheel. You can plug this in and literally guide yourself right along the top edge of that line to cut this off. For us, we're gonna use the vertical bandsaw. So the air vent is cut. I want you to notice one reason why we cut it on the bottom. We cut it on the bottom so that you could retain your mounting positions to the front of the crash beam. So cut along this bottom edge as you see we have done here. Next, you want to reinstall your wiring harness into the bottom of your air vent system. You also wanna reinstall your wiring harness clip back into this location here. And it's pretty simple to do once you get it in then. You line those posts up in the top posts are lined up reconnect your wiring harness to the back bolts in the front and this thing's back on all right air vent systems back on bolted in place we now have to reinstall the front bumper so again get a buddy to help you out get the front bumper mocked up over these posts here and then just get it situated in place
All right, the front bumper is mocked up in place. The next thing you wanna to do to make sure this thing stays in its place is put some tape over this gap right here between your fender on both sides and also make sure that the front bumper is actually hanging on all these clips. With this thing in place, you now can come down here and you can see where the mount is. And what we suggest doing is actually taking a paint marker and going up through the air dam section, past the paint marker, through the hole, and kind of give yourself a circle line. Draw on the each pieces of the honeycomb grill where you think you're gonna need to cut based on where you see that paint marker passing through that hole. Then when you take your bumper off, it's a lot easier to figure out where you need to cut this in order for your tow hook shaft to pass through. All right, so we took the bumper off and we were able to see yellow marks where we were passing the paint marker through. And what we did is we had some marks in this area, so we're mapping out in yellow the pieces of the honeycomb that we're gonna cut out. This allows you to not make a mistake when doing this. There's two ways that we suggest doing this. You could use a Dremel with a reinforced metal blade, or you could use an oscillating saw. You can get these at Harbor Freight for like 20 bucks. Uh, they work great for doing this, but you gotta basically use these to remove the bulk of this, and then it's some filing and hand sanding from thereafter. So we cut the honeycomb from the back, flipped the bumper over. Now you can see what our finished cuts look like. And I want you guys to see that I intentionally stayed away from the edges of the honeycomb so that that way we could come back in with a file and file that down and get a real nice finish. So don't cut all the way to where you want. Stay inside of that so that you can always file these down and get a real nice finish. Front bumper is finished being filed around the opening. Now we're gonna pick it up and put it on the car. All right, front bumper's on. Grab your fender to bumper bracket, move the liner to the side, and you can actually pass this up through and then reinstall your two nuts. Once you have that front bumper on, now what you wanna do is you wanna reinstall your bolts all along the bolt locations here. Then, once you have that front bumper on, now what you wanna do is you wanna reinstall your bolts all along the bolt locations here. Then, grab your bumper cowl, put that on and reinsert all your plastic clips, clips that hold this in place. All right, guys, front bumper bolts are in place. Cal is in place with all your plastic fasteners. We're gonna lower the hood a little bit, raise the car to start installing the air dam. All right, front bumper's on. Next step, make sure you guys plug in any turn signal bulb locations up inside the car here. After that, put your air dam back in place. All right, guys, your under air dam's on. Make sure you reattach all your fender liner. All the hardware's in place have no bolts or clips left. Next step is to install your tow hook shaft. You need a 20 millimeter socket. I do suggest putting a little bit of grease on the threads, just helps for it to install easier. So let's do that part now. Next step guys, after your tow hook shaft's installed, you wanna apply a little bit of grease to this end of your tow hook ring. Once that is done, thread your shaft nut onto the tow hook ring with the shaft installed on the tow hook ring. Now you wanna insert the tow hook ring into the shaft, thread it on. Now what you wanna do here is go all the way until you bottom out. You wanna check the orientation and the alignment of the ring. So now we're a little off, so what you wanna do is back it out until it's level. Once you get that level, now what you can do is tighten up the shaft nut, and we're gonna show you what to do next. So double check that your tow hook ring is level you get in the front of it. If anything, it, it helps a little bit to have it a couple degrees off of level towards you, so that that way when you tighten up the shaft nut, it'll rotate a little bit. Next step is to use masking tape on your shaft nut. And what this does is it just prevents the, protects the powder coating on that nut for when you're tightening it up. You're really only gonna be choosing two flats to tighten with. We sell a tug tool that makes this process easy. It's a slim tool that allows you to get into here over that masking tape for you then to hold the tow hook ring and just snug that shaft nut up. It's snug and that's all you really need to keep this thing from rotating. 
you can loosen up this cross bolt with an eight millimeter Allen key and you can rotate your tow hook ring down and lock it in there. If you wanna keep it out in this position, just use this cross bolt to lock in that tow hook ring where you want it to be. All right guys, final step, make sure you get your front wheels installed. That's a wrap for a tow hook installation on 2015 plus Ford Mustang. Until next time, enjoy the drive.